Okay, this how-to video is going to go through um, the DFA or Design for Assembly rules inside the Cadence PCB tools. So there's a couple of methods to do this. There's a traditional way using the DFA spreadsheet and then there's a new feature using uh, the Constraint Manager. So if we look at, um, and what this does is basically allows us to, um, instead of using the place bound, so this, this kind of gray area is a place boundary on a component, you can have something called a DFA bound which is a lot tighter to the actual component and then you would use the DFA spreadsheet or the constraint manager uh, package to package spacing to, to specify the distances. So if we look at the colors, instead of using um, place bound uh, top and place bound bottom and place bound inners, if you've got inner layers, if you've got um, embedded components or flexi rigids, etc., you would use the, the DFA bound, basically this DFA bound la layer. If we look at setup constraints, and uh, DFA constraint sp spreadsheet. You can see effectively, you, this is how you would define the distances, the, the units that you want. So I'm gonna use millimeters and I'm gonna just specify 0.5 as a default, but this is effectively a side to side, an end to end, a side to end and an end to side. So you can have different rules depending on the way the component is orientated on the PCB. Let's just turn the DRC mode on. So if we look at simple classifications, um, by default, these are the, the, the default components that are just coming in from my, my database. I can make some classifications. So you can use the symbol classifications themselves and have a list of all the symbols here. Um, but that obviously makes a very, very complex spreadsheet. So a lot of people tend to make um, class names. So I could have uh, maybe a class of, of IC. I'll have one called Connector. I'll have one called Mechanical. Uh, and I'll have one called um, Discrete. So you can then set up rules for the different classes that you have, but you need to build these objects into classes first. So there's my, my individual classes. So I'm just gonna select the parts that I want and move these into the specific classes. So it's a case of just you know ticking the boxes for the parts or the different footprints that you have. Let's get these two as IC. So we'll uh, take those ones and then it's a right click cut, pick the class that you're interested in, and then right click paste a class, and then that would then put those objects in that class area. So it's just repeating that for all the classes that I've got here. So I've got some mechanical parts here. So there's my uh, my classes all defined. I'm then gonna select the, the four classes that I want and we'll do an update. And that then brings those objects into my uh, my spreadsheet. So I've got, you know, connector, connector, discrete to connector, discrete to discrete, discrete to IC. So you can work your way through the different object types that you've got um, and get your, your classes. And then you can obviously have the same for the top to the bottom. So I want the same rules on the top and the bottom so I can copy the table to the bottom and that then gives me a table top and bottom. And if I click, click OK, I'm gonna save this as a Steve. So this writes the DFA table out. And then if we did an update DRC, um, you can see I've got DRC errors here because these components are too close. Now, um, the advantage of, of having this kind of DFA object is that when you start to move components about, you'll actually see these little bubbles show me DRC when I'm meet, not meeting the constraint. When it's clear I'm actually meeting the constraint, I wouldn't see a DRC error. So um, this is the placement bubble, and obviously this would this would change in size depending on the size of the spacing rule that you had. So um, let's go back to that. So we've got a setup and constraints and the DFA spreadsheet. Um, so for the bottom of the board, I'm gonna just reduce the, the discrete to 0.25 on all the different faces. Click OK. We'll update that. And then if we did an update DRC, obviously I'll get less DRCs. But when I move the component now, you'll see that that bubble has got smaller because it's based on the size that I've got. Um, and you can use that as a feature. Now, with the new uh, Constraint Manager manufacturing rules, when I go to Constraint Manager, um, it's telling me that I've got an old DFA table in design and I can then migrate this to the new DFA table. So if I go yes, if I then look at the package to package spacing, there's effectively my rule sets 
driven from my package to package spacing. So I could then use this as the new method going forward. Um, and I, it, it then gets applied to the different classes and subclasses on the layers that we've got. It's only done in the, in the primary section at the moment. I could apply this to the flex if I wanted as well. So this is kind of the basic principle of the DFA. You get the DFA placement bubbles, which allows you to effectively have the components and visibly see a placement bubble when you're trying to place the components, which can an easier placing and makes it a lot easier um, to resolve any rules that you've got. The DFA spreadsheet can also be launched from uh, externally. So if we go to start and the cadence PCB 17 for utilities, actually, uh, the design for spreadsheet here. So you can actually launch it without a license. So you give it to your, your manufacturing process guys to build the DFA spreadsheet based on the library of parts that you have. Um, and you can then drive that and give you that value so that you're, you're placing to the manufacturing guidelines of your, your manufacturing teams.